94.9 The Rock, the All Night Show, Ed the Sock here. Now, the Arkells formed in Hamilton in 2006 with their first album out in 2008. Uh, since then, they've racked up hit after hit, gone platinum in Canada, been featured in video games and sports casts, nominated for 17 Juno Awards, won nine. Their new album, Laundry Pile, is out now. We've been listening to the uh, debut single, Skin, on the show, like over and over and over. Uh, and joining me today is uh, their front man, Max Gurman. Hey, Max. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if it's an honor, uh, why didn't you dress up? You look like you're doing working in the garage. <laughs> no, man. What This is back in. This is 90s are back. So everybody looks kind of ridiculous, but this is this is what people are doing. Uh, okay, you're at the age now where you're deciding to follow what people are doing instead of doing your own thing. Is that you're trying to stay hip? <laughs> Listen, that's the, that's the name of the game in rock and roll. You you gotta kind of you know figure out what what the kids want and and, and go that direction. All right, now uh, let's get this out of the way. Your album is called Laundry Pile. I am a sock puppet. Ha, 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 ha. Let's uh, move on from there, okay? <laughs> yeah, you could have been featured on uh, on the album cover. It could have just been you, you know? Never mind the album cover. Why wasn't I a guest vocal? That's true. I, it's, it's a soft record. I don't know if it would suit your gruff voice. I don't know if there's any tunes. Uh, maybe Come the on, next I got album. A, I got a smooth record. voice. You want to hear a little uh, Stevie Wonder? My <laughs> Sherry Amor, pretty as a summer day. Consider no, that stop it. It's terrible. Do, do, I think terrible. It's terrible. Do you can do some punk tunes though. I feel like, what do you sing any punk rock songs? Like, I uh, did a uh, punk rock version of Billy Joel's You May Be Right years ago for Sony, let, and it never got the airplay. Let me hear it. You may be right. I may be crazy. <laughs> But it just may be a lunatic you're looking for. Wait, what is this? I, I, enough of this. I'm, I'm supposed to be talking to you. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it's try. funny. We never met before. But uh, you guys, your first album was out in 2008. Mm. And uh, much had already fallen off a cliff at that point, And I jumped away. So we never got a chance to meet. Which is disappointing because I never got a chance to fromage any of your videos. Yeah, we just missed each other. I feel like our band is in this weird in between of like the heyday of like music culture and then TikTok. We're kind of right in the middle of it, and uh, yeah, so we just missed you. But we, we we watched you growing up. We're obviously huge fans. We would have loved to be slandered by you. That would have been a well. Huge there's dream there's still time. <laughs> <laughs> there's still time. All right. Now, uh, listen. Congratulations that mm. you've been around so long. Most groups can't stand each other by now. Yeah. Um, 2006, you started. Back then, did you think you'd still be doing this in 2023? It's kind of crazy to think. And we have, you know, like eight or nine records. And, you know, we I met Mike and Nick in the first week of university. So in 2004. So I was 17 years old and now I'm 36. So to think that I'm like in business and I have this creative endeavor with guys I randomly met at McMaster University in the first week of school is kind of insane to me. And so anytime I'm starting to feel sorry for myself or complaining about something, I was like, okay, try to count, count your lucky stars. Because as you said, being in a band is an impossibly weird job, right? Like the the, the the structure of it doesn't make any sense. It's like, it's a very deeply personal thing, but you're also in business with these people and you're also living out of a suitcase and you're trying to impress people by being vulnerable. I don't know, It's it's a weird... It's a weird lifestyle, but we're, we're keeping it going. It's good. Well, you're being very vulnerable now, and that impresses me. Um, <laughs> so listen, uh, 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 Skin, uh, mm -hmm. is a, you said that the, the song is uh, you know more personal, thoughtful, and pensive. Um, do you think that as uh, you get older and closer to death, you get more introspective? <laughs> good question. You know... Um... I don't, you know, I'm I'm in my mid thirties, so I don't know if I'm thinking about in, in that respect. And uh, but I will say, I, you know, anytime you think you know something in life, uh, you can kind of creep. Someone else can creep up on you and surprise you and go, "Oh my god, I never thought of it this way," or "This is a new feeling I've never experienced before." And actually, I will say, I don't know how old you are, Ed the Sock, but w I feel like your mid early forties is the weirdest time of of life. Everyone's getting divorced. 
people hate their kids. You know, it's like, what am I doing with myself? What happened to who am I? So I'm, I'm actually kind of fearing uh, that, that, that next chapter, probably the most. It's uh, kind of like the 40s are a redux of your teens. Who yeah. am I and what am I doing? What am I doing? But the stakes are way higher because there's like money and kids involved. Oh, yeah, when, <laughs> when, when you're 15, who gives a crap? Uh, yeah, you're 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 off to the races when you're fifty. Yeah. Now, um, uh, skin is you say it's about the messy parts of life that teach us things, which I think you were alluding to there. What are some of the messy parts of your life that have taught you things that have worked into this album? Uh, you know, I think we're always learning, and this is definitely like a relationship record. And I think a lot of the songs are just like you, you just sometimes if you if I think everybody's gone through this where. You kind of you're breaking up with somebody, or you're, you're going through a breakup, and you have all these conversations in your head that you you're having all the time with that person. You know, like I'm sure everybody's like, oh, this is if I ran into them, this is what I'd say, or this is what I'd love to be able to tell them, or this is a regret that I have, or this is why I'm sorry, or this is what you I was like. I've never up. I've never experienced that, Max, because I tell people what I'm thinking right then and there, so I never have to worry about regrets like that. But but no former sock girlfriends have ever gone. Uh, I don't want to talk to you anymore. And, uh, you know, you have to have to spend, spend some Max, time on your own. Max, I don't date socks, okay? I date real people. I am not limited by my ethnicity, okay? <laughs> uh, but, so how have the changes in your lives over the years have been reflected in the changes in your music? I think we're more confident the more we do it. Um, because we, you know, it's been good. Like we've taken chances creatively over the past where it's like, we started this rock band and then we started writing songs that felt a little poppier. Um, and we were wondering like, is our fans going to like, not like that, but our fans have been pretty open-minded to reasonable people. I always say that about our Kells fans. They're the most normal, nice people of any fan base. It's like, they they never get too intense. They root on you just the right amounts. And then like, Last album, I was like, I kind of want to try to sing in French. I don't really know French, but I like the sound of French music. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. And they seemed to think it was, it was good. And so this record is, is a very stripped back singer-songwriter record. It sounds It's not nearly as like peppy as most other Arkell songs. And so far, the reaction has been really good. So I think you just got to keep doing what moves you creatively and, and just kind of hope that people will be along for the ride. To go back to knocking at the door, uh, mm -hmm. you said that that was for about standing up for good, decent human qualities. Uh, mm. Have you been on social media lately? <laughs> you know what? I honestly try to stay off of it. Like, even people that I fundamentally agree with in every respect, I oh, I can't even listen to them sometimes, let alone the people who I completely disagree with. So I, I think it's better for my own well-being to stay off. Do you know Bo Burnham has this special from the pandemic where – did you ever watch that? It's called Inside with Bo Burnham, where he's no, doing that. Anyway, about it. He, he, he basically has a bit where he's like, does every single person have to say every single thing on their mind every single moment of the day? Can everybody shut the, up? Can everybody shut up? Can everybody, can anybody shut up? Can anybody literally shut up? And I, I think about that a lot. Whenever I have an opinion I want to air, I'm like, Max, just shut up. It doesn't matter. Well, the less people have to say, the more they say it, um, <laughs> is, is the way I look at it. Now, listen, uh, you've been on uh, the Forza video game, been mm -hmm. uh, uh, Anthem for NFL, NHL, MLB. Uh, you ever, when you're uh, recording a song, say, hey, this sounds like money? <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. Like, at what point in the process? I'm like, oh, yeah, this is going to work. Yeah, you know what? I think the first couple of times it happened, I wasn't expecting it, but the more we did it, the more I was like, I, I'd start to get a feeling like, oh yeah, this could work pretty good in, in like a moment where the players are coming out of the tunnel or something, you know, it's like, oh, this could be kind of cool in a music video uh, or a video game. But the thing is, I don't even really play video games. So there's been a couple that have surprised me, like the Forza car racing game. I don't know anything about that, but people seem to know that game very well and seem to like it. So I don't know. Um, but we were just in a, one of our songs was just in an Adam Sandler's new movie. And I was not expecting that. That was very cool. The definitely not my bat mitzvah movie. It, our song Past Life plays in a very pivotal scene. And I was very delighted by that because I wasn't expecting it. What do you want people to take away from Dirty Laundry? Or what well, not Dirty Laundry, Laundry Pile? <laughs> you know what? I just want it to be a record that keeps people company at home. Like, you know, in the morning, you want to put on some music where you 
while you're drinking your coffee or a night you're making your dinner. Just something that you can put on top to bottom and it feels nice. All right. Now, uh, as far as you being in your, your 30s and uh, looking, you know, sort of dreading your 40s, um, <laughs> judging by the camera shot that you have with way too much headroom, it's like you're already in your late 40s, early 50s. What do you mean the headroom? Is that what does that mean? It understand. means you, you're not framed well. It's like typically, oh. you, no, you, like you got to tilt the, the tilt the camera down a little. Like that? Yeah, see, that's better. I don't want to see you your tell me the beginning of the interview. I, oh, I, because I wanted you to make an ass of yourself. All right, well, listen. Mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah, as a comic in all seriousness, uh, I am always glad when local boys, when Canadian bands do well and stay together, and you guys have, and your music. It hasn't started to suck. Like you guys seem to reinvent and progress along with your audience, as well as getting new people. And uh, I'm very glad to see that uh, you're still down to earth and that, uh, you know, you've had success and uh, it seems like you're going to keep going. Thank, thanks for saying that. We know how precious all this is. So we, we try our best to keep our heads on straight and just keep working. By the way, there, I was always very disappointed when I first found out about you guys that you didn't do the Ramones thing and each of you take the last name Arkell. That would be cool. Never too late. That would be the way you're... You know, that's actually a good press thing for the maybe the next record where the, we officially change our names. To, you know, Max Arkell, Tony Arkell. Like, and that's just part of the, the story. That's good. Well, listen, if you, if you need some uh, shameless uh, press that has nothing to do with your music, go for it. <laughs> you know maybe we'll get there one day <laughs> and uh listen i look forward to meeting in person one day max absolutely yeah you're welcome to show anytime all right uh, i don't have to stand in line or anything right no i'll get you right in the back all right thank you uh max kerman ladies and gentlemen frontman for the arkells new album laundry pile out uh listening to uh skin on the all night show here so uh and we look forward to more more uh, releases thanks max Thank you. See ya. See ya.